dollars. No, but what about the I don't know. church cost? Yeah. You should have deducted the right. organist from that. <laughs>
of the congregation of First Presbyterian Church. I do want to welcome all of you here to this joyous occasion today. And I do so recognizing that not everyone who wanted to be here can be here in person. But just so you'll know, we are broadcasting this, and I checked a moment ago, and there are dozens of folks out there who are watching from other places. So we welcome you because they are here in spirit as we celebrate this joyous union this day. This is a wedding, but is also a worship service, a time in which we gather as a congregation just for this day to rejoice that God is indeed our maker and our creator. Hear these words of scripture from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Marriage is a gift from God. And we gather in God's presence to celebrate and give thanks for the love that Margot and Miles have for one another and for the vows of loyalty that they will make, vows which will commit them to a life together, a life guided by God's spirit and strengthened by God's love. God gave us marriage so that two people may pledge themselves to each other as companions and helpmates, living faithfully in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow and sickness and in health for all their days together. God gave us marriage for the fullest commitment of love two people may share. In marriage, we belong to one another and with affection and tenderness freely give ourselves to one another. In marriage, God joins us together in an intimate relationship of faith, hope, and love. God gave us marriage for the formation of family life, for the birth and nurture of children, for the building of community, and as a taste of the life promised in God's kingdom. In marriage, we are called to a new way of life, ordered and blessed by God, a way of life that should not be entered into carelessly or from selfish motives, but responsibly and prayerfully. We rejoice that marriage is a gift from God, blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, let marriage be held in honor by all. Please join me in prayer. God of creation, Margo and Miles stand before us this day, ready to bind their lives together in marriage. May your love shape the love they have for one another. May their love proclaim your holy name to the world. May the world see your kingdom in their love. May their commitment to you and to each other be strengthened by the Spirit every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Margo and Miles, I have a question for each of you. Miles, understanding that God has created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of marriage, do you affirm your desire and intention to enter this covenant if so, say, I do. I do. Margo, understanding that God has created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of marriage, do you affirm your desire and intention to enter this covenant? If so, say, I do. I do. 
Who accompanies Margot to be married to Miles this day? You may be seated. And before we go any further, I have a question for you, the congregation that is gathered here today. The presence at this wedding of friends and family is a treasure beyond price. You are here to witness the vows and celebrate the love of Margot and Miles. So I ask you this question today. Will you do everything in your power to honor and uphold Margot and Miles in their marriage and to support their commitment to one another for all their days. If so, say, we will. I'd like to read now from Scripture, the book of 1 John. Hear these words. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Amen. Margot and Miles. That scripture I read was one that you chose. And because you chose it, and because I just read it, I ask that now that you own it, that you make it yours. Hear the words that it offers us. Yes, it talks about love. We're in love. We're getting married. But it talks about a greater love than that. The love that not just comes from God, the love that is God. Many times it says God is love. And this is what we believe. So make it yours. Make it your personal, personal Shema. Hang it on your doorpost if you must, but in a place where you can see it and will remember it. And when the times get rough, and they will, I'm sorry, but they will, go back to these words and let them guide you. Since God loved us so much, we also ought 
to love one another. So whatever may come between you, remember that it is not greater than God, but God is greater than all things. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. We love because God loved first. And that is what we remember. That is why we are here. We celebrate a wedding in a church surrounded by family and friends and by God. So I ask this day that this wedding be blessed by our Lord. Amen. Margo and Miles, since you have freely expressed your intention to marry, I invite you to continue holding hands and in the presence of God and all these witnesses, promise to bind yourselves to one another as a couple. Miles, I will ask that you repeat these words after me. I, Miles, take you, Margot, to be my wife. I, Miles, take you, Margot, to be my wife. And I promise, and I promise before God and these witnesses, before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Margo, if you'll say these words. I, Margo, take you miles to be my husband. I, Margo, take you miles to be my husband. And I promise. And I promise. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. What do you bring as a sign of your promise? Place it here. Margo, Miles. These rings are signs of the promise and commitment that you bring to each other. So we ask our God to bless these rings and make them symbols of an ending love and unbroken faithfulness. Amen. Miles, if you'll take her ring. Place it on her finger. That one. Almost. I saw the engagement. You put it on the wrong hand. On purpose. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. Say these words after me. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. As a sign of our constant faith. As a sign of our constant faith. And enduring love. And enduring love. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. All right, Margo, if you'll take this ring, place it on his finger. <laughs> I'm not going to be the only one. <laughs> Hold it there. <laughs> Say after me, this ring I give you. This ring I give you. As a sign of our constant faith. As a sign of our constant faith. And enduring love. And enduring love. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the let us pray. Eternal God, without your grace, no promise is sure. Strengthen Margo and Miles with patience, kindness, gentleness, humor, and all other gifts of your spirit, so that they may fulfill the vows they have made this day. Keep them with such love and joy that they may build a home of peace and welcome. Guide them by your word to serve you all their days. Help us all, O oh God, to do your will in each of our houses and our lives. Enrich us with your grace 
so that supporting one another, we may serve those in need and hasten the coming of peace, love, and justice on earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before God and in the presence of this congregation, Margot and Miles have made their solemn vows to each other and they have confirmed their promises by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. So therefore, it is my joy to proclaim that they are now husband and wife. Blessed be the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. Miles and Margot, you are now husband and wife. May you always be friends, sharing, enjoying, experiencing important things in common. May you always be lovers, sharing, enjoying, experiencing each other. And may the grace of God, which lifts up men and women to the highest levels of living, never cease to exceed itself in your lives from this day onward. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and in the life everlasting. Amen. I would like to introduce to you all Mr. and Mrs. Miles Frazier, and you may kiss.